The collection of permanent voter cards across Nigeria has been extended by a week. So you'll be ending on the 29th of January 2023, so INEC can stick to its timetable of activities leading up to the elections that are holding on February the 25th and March the 11th. There have been many complaints on the collection process by potential voters, and my guest helps us understand a few of the issues citizens have raised. Meanwhile, in our focus on the FCT, we take a closer look at the PVC collection exercise across Abuja, and we update you on major stories from Nigeria's presidency. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Dateline Abuja. Hello and welcome to Dateline Abuja. I am Kayla Magua. Let's begin with an update on major stories from Nigeria's seat of power. President Buhari says he plans to stay in the country after handing over power on May 29, 2023. He made the disclosure during his visit to Yobe State, where he commissioned federal and state government projects in Damaturuda State Capital. He also asked all candidates vying for positions in the 2023 general elections to be prepared to develop the country. Ahead of the general elections on February 25th, President Buhari has renewed calls to foreign government representatives not to meddle in Nigeria's internal affairs. The president made this known when he received letters of credence from ambassadors of Switzerland, Sweden, the Republic of Ireland, the Kingdom of Thailand, the Republic of Senegal and the Republic of South Sudan at the State House. He further stated that Nigeria is working closely with ECOWAS to deal with insecurity in the West African region and implement strategies to contain the spate of unconstitutional changes in government. I wish to finally note that Nigerians will be going to the polls to elect another government at the general election on the 25th of February this year, 2023. I urge you to be guided by diplomatic practice to ensure that your activities remain within the limits of your profession as you monitor the build-up to the elections and the conduct of the general election itself. I am therefore confident that your appointments are obviously deliberate to build on the successes of your immediate predecessors in order to advance our relations to significant and viable heights. President Buhari has expressed his anguish over the death of seven personnel of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, who were ambushed and killed by bandits in Kaduna State while on official duty. Consequently, the president directed armed forces to seek the bandits who inflicted this casualty and make them pay the price. According to a statement released by the senior special assistant to the president, Mr. Garaba Shehu, President Buhari described the loss of the NSCDC personnel as a tragic event and salutes the courage of the men who gave their lives to the nation. In his words, the NSCDC personnel who braved all challenges to guard our nation and its people have made the ultimate sacrifice in the line of duty. My thoughts are with the bereaved families and their compatriots in the service. May God grant them and entire service the fortitude to bear the loss. Nigeria and Spain are increasing their partnership this time to address issues of insecurity, especially food security in the country. The commitment was made in a series of meetings at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and at the office of the Vice President by Spain's Foreign Affairs Minister, Mr. Jose Albariz. The Vice President, Professor Yemi Shibajo, used the opportunity to speak on Nigeria's energy transition plan. The Central Bank of Nigeria has asked banks to stop dispensing the old Naira notes as on Friday, January 13, 2023. Addressing the news conference virtually in Abuja, the director of currency operation at the Apex Bank, Mr. Bello Umar, insists that there will be no shift in the deadline for Nigerians to swap their old notes with the new ones. The Attorney General of the Federation, Mr. Bubaka Malami, is stressing the need to underplay the culture of mutual mistrust between the federal and state governments to enhance a symbiotic relationship between both arms of government. He stated this at the meeting of the body of Attorney Generals holding in Abuja, which is focused on examining some of the issues militating against the desired synergy in the administration of justice and preferring practical ways forward. 
He charged the state's attorneys general to always be guided by the abiding framework under the fundamental objectives and directive principles of state policy as enunciated under Chapter 2 of the 1999 Constitution as amended. I would like to note that after close to six years, it is imperative that we convene another national summit on justice to enable us to assess the performance and impact of the 2017 policy and determine appropriate review and amendments in order to further deepen legal and judicial reforms in our country. The Ukrainian government is set to donate 25,000 tons of grain to Nigeria and establish two grain hubs in Lagos and Port Harcourt under its Grain from Ukraine initiative as part of ways to strengthen bilateral relations between both countries. Ukraine's Minister of Agrarian Policy and Food, Mikola Soski, stated this at a bilateral meeting at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Abuja with Nigeria's Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mr. Joffrey Onyema. While thanking the Ukrainian minister for the gesture, Ms. Onyema commiserated with the Ukrainian delegation over the country's war with Russia, noting the impact of the war on Nigerians studying in Ukraine, promising that the Nigerian government would do all it can to ensure the war in Ukraine is brought to a quick end. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has reiterated its commitment to conduct the 2023 general elections as scheduled. As the chairman of the commission, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, says the electoral umpire is not contemplating any adjustment to the timetable, let alone postponement of the exercise. The INEC chairman made this clarification against the backdrop of a recent report suggesting that the commission could cancel the 2023 general elections because of security challenges in some states. The commission is not contemplating any adjustment to the election timetable, let alone postponement of the general election. The repeated assurance by the security agencies for the adequate protection of personnel, materials and processes also reinforces our determination to proceed. The 2023 general election will hold as scheduled. Any report to the contrary is not the official position of the Commission. Welcome back. Nigeria's voting population has experienced an explosion. This is a good thing. For so long, we've decried voter apathy, especially among Nigeria's youth. And we all pray this explosion will help end political monopoly and open up Nigeria's election playing field, creating ultimately a fairer political process. Fingers crossed. We went around Abuja to witness the PVC collection process and the challenges voters are facing trying to collect their PVCs. Please watch this. The 2023 general elections are just a few weeks away. Electioneering campaigns are in full swing following the nomination of candidates for the 1,491 constituencies for which elections will be conducted this year. The presidential election as well as elections for 109 senatorial districts and 360 federal constituencies will be held on Saturday, 25th February 2023. Two weeks later, governorship elections in 28 states of the Federation and all 993 state assembly constituencies will be held on Saturday, 11th of March, 2023. On December the 2nd, 2022, the Independent National Electoral Commission announced the commencement of the distribution of permanent voter cards to citizens who are already registered to vote in the forthcoming elections. When the exercise started on December the 12th, Many citizens across Abuja flocked to their various centers to pick up their cards. Abuja's six area councils have designated wards for the collection of PVCs. Residents in Amak can get their PVCs in 12 wards. Those in Buari area council, 10 wards. The Guagulada area council, another 10 wards. Abaji area council, 10 wards as well. The Kujie area council also has 10 wards. And there are 10 more wards in the Kwali Area Council. At this centre in Abuja, officials say they distribute an average of 1,200 cards per day, a record some say is insignificant considering the number of cards to be distributed before the elections in February this year. So the PVC collection is going on um, at the local government level. 
and because in our pre-election reports, oh, in about 96% of LGAs, um, this exercise is going on. Um, people are showing up, but I'd say that because the PVC collection is concentrated at the local government level, um, the collection rate, you know, has has been um, very low. Um, our expectation is if INEC de decentralizes the PVC collection to the wards and take it closer to the people, then perhaps we might have an increase in the number of collection um, of the PVCs. And three things INEC really needs to do is one, it needs to ensure that the PVCs of every registered voter is produced. We've received complaints of PVCs um, of registered voters not produced. Um, and that, again, is raising a, a source of concern. So those PVCs have to be produced for the people to collect them. The second is the entire country earnestly looks forward to January 6th, when the PVC collection will be devolved to the ward area councils. INEC needs to announce where the collection points in those ward um, level so people can go to their wards and collect their PVCs. I don't know if the 10 days for that particular exercise is sufficient, given the number of PVCs um, that are produced. In some other collection centers across Abuja, citizens want the election umpire to improve on the collection process. Uh, the experience is very, very, very tough because I'm here since yesterday. I didn't get my PVC and I've been waiting to get my PVC. It's like the people that are working inside there, they are not much like that. They need to employ many, many people so that they will help them to give people their voters card. My experience is uh, very nice. I'm happy with, with what INEC is doing so far because uh, I just came in like um, 20 minutes ago and right now I've gotten my PVC. It was smooth and, uh, it was smooth and fair. So I, 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 I commend INEC. It's a gradual process. For us to even get the approval to use the beavers, an improvement in technology, it took quite a, some time. So we will get there. For now, this is where we are and we are making the best of it. I've been here since morning. I came around six. We've been on the queue and um, people, as you know, people will just come in and they will just usher them in and we've been on the queue. But I'm so happy that I've, I've gotten my PVC. <laughs> We spoke to the INEC National Commissioner in charge of voter education, Mr. Festus Okoye, about the ongoing exercise and the records of the distribution so far. Uh, the turnout of uh, persons coming to come and collect their PVCs has been very, very wonderful. Yes, there were hiccups, there were hitches, and there were a few challenges on the on the first day. Um, so many of our compatriots turned up on the turned out on the first day as if that was the last day for collection. Uh, but this collection will uh, uh, started on the 12th day of. Um, December 2022, and we go on up to the 22nd day of January uh, 2023. And even at that, on the 6th day of January uh, 2023, we are going to devolve to the 8,809 registration areas, and our officers will remain there until the 15th day of um, uh, January 2023 before they move back to the local government's uh, areas again and then stay there until the 22nd day of January uh, 2023. And so the feedback has been wonderful. The resident electoral commissioners we are directed and have been directed uh, to make um, a daily return of PVC collection for every local government area in, in Nigeria. There are at least 20 million voter cards to be distributed before the elections in February. 11 million of these are a backlog of uncollected PVCs in 2019. In addition, INEC has an estimated 9 million newly printed PVCs from the 2022 continuous voter registration exercise to be distributed. As time is running out for this exercise, some political observers offer suggestions that could speed up the process. INEC needs to institute this framework where they can work with the pastors, the imams, and other traditional and religious leaders to get people and their congregation out to collect their PVC. But before you also do that, because you see, once we mobilize people and get their interest to collect PVC, and they go and it is not ready, then we would lose much more people that would not want to go back and collect their PVC. And, and this is where, again, INEC needs to provide a platform where people can check if their PVCs are ready and where they can collect them or send people SMSs. The Independent National Electoral Commission had promised to devolve the PVC distribution to registration areas and wards from the 6th to the 15th of January 2023. 
after which the distribution will move to the INEC offices at the local government areas till January the 29th, when the exercise is expected to stop. My guest on the program is the resident electoral commissioner for the nation's capital, Mr. Yahaya Bello. He unpacks these challenges and plans to ensure the PVC collection is seamless and also ensure all potential voters take part in the electoral process. Aladi Ayabelu, welcome to Dateline Abuja. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> My pleasure. The PVC collection in the FCT, we've been seeing all these videos of crowds and so many people. What's exciting to me is the fact that so many young people are becoming a part of the process. From the standpoint of someone who actually oversees this particular endeavor in the FCT, what do you make of the turnout this year to collect their PVCs? Our election is being more and more accepted by the people in this country. Uh, you mean more people uh, trust uh, the electoral uh, process? Absolutely. Uh, the, the commissioner had been saying so, you know, my chairman, Professor Mahmoud Yaku, and the commission, they have been saying so for a long time, that if you vote, we will count your vote, and your count will, you know, your vote will count. It has been. Let me put it nearer to the uh, introduction of the beaver, you know, the beavers, you know, by medial, you know, uh, accreditation system that we are using now, which we used before in some other elections, which we didn't use in 2019 election. We used the smart card reader. Now, I will attribute to the fact that uh, during the off-season FCT election, which we conducted in February uh, 2022. For the area council chairman. For the area council chairman, we had a lot of challenge with the people. To be honest and fair, you know, uh, the viewers, you know, did not perform as expected at all during that uh, uh, election. A lot of people missed the chance to vote in that election. It didn't go down well with me as a rec, neither did it go down well with my bosses, you know, the Honorable Chairman. So the Commission invited all the recs of the country for a meeting after that election. Since that election, after the meeting that you had with INEC, after the election, where all the wrecks were brought together, so what has improved? The commission went and saw the papers. And after that, there was an off-season election in Nasarawa State, and the papers were used, performed very well. We went to Ondo, the papers performed very well. I was a supporting wreck in Anambra State, the papers worked very well. The people's worked very well in the KT state. The people's worked very well in Oshun state. I was there. And uh, after Oshun, you know, even before Oshun, even after AKT, you know, we started having people trooping in to participate in the continuous, uh, continuous voter restriction exercise. Not only people who have reached 18, people who didn't vote at all before, they now realize that uh, if they vote, it will count. It will count, mm -hmm. and then it will be counted, and it will count. And that is what resulted in the surge during the CBA, you know, uh, continued voter registration exercise. So let's talk a bit about this surge, you know, because uh, we're seeing it all over the TV. We're watching it in the news. And while we're all excited about the fact that many young people are, you know, becoming a part of the process, your office's ability to handle this number of people who are trying to collect their permanent voter cards. Some people have actually expressed frustration uh, with the process. Exactly. So talk to us a bit about what's really going on. Exactly. Those who are frustrated are those who come to the office after 3 o'clock and they want to be attended to. If there was law and order to collect these PBCs, we will attend to as many people as possible. But I heard that you're creating <laughs> more centers in AMAC where people can come and collect their PVCs. Yes. So how many are we talking about now? Now, let me tell you precisely. It is only in FCT that INEC conducts area council election. It is also only in FCT in the whole of this country as a state where people collect their PVCs in the state headquarters. And this is because we split AMAC into two to make people a lot of people, let me tell you, they have collected their PBCs. 
the few people who are shouting are those who either came late and they want to be served, you know, and uh, they don't want to follow everybody. So there's no foul play, as no, they, at because all. people are alleging uh, uh, that uh, there's well, foul play well, in your uh, office. Uh, but the fact is that, you know, after conducting the continued voter registration exercise, after printing the PVCs, Heineck is not contesting any election, you know, Nobody is going to vote INEC. This cars, it will be useless for INEC. We are not going to eat it. It is for us to make a lot of efforts for people to come and collect this. Uh, I will give you a classical example. You know, when people came and started banging our doors, after we have, I said, we if people can wait here, we'll give you how many number of people we have attended since morning. Those of you here who are shouting now, you have come late, you want to cause commotion. And let me tell you, nobody is going to collect any card again. And tomorrow, I have a demarcation. I have a line. If you want to collect your card, you know, stay there at this demarcation, form a queue, you can collect your cards. They said, I said, okay, tomorrow morning, come. Come to this gate, you won't collect your card. When they came, nobody was giving card. Then volunteers among them started to put them in queues in order to collect. I say, I cannot allow, if you, if you see wireless and handsets or people who are going to see, if you see, I will not allow a crowd to go and steal wireless from our staff and overrun them. There must be law and order. Let me tell you, to be honest, we have been able to give these PBCs a check and ask around, you know, there is no ulterior motive at all about the PBCs. We want as many people as possible to come out and vote in this country. So the more they vote, the media for us. That's why we collected the exercise. For those who haven't collected their PVCs, we do have to round up. For those who haven't collected yet, just talk, talk to, the, to the citizens of Abuja. Uh, of Abuja. Yes. So uh, what, what do they have to do now? As, uh, well, before I tell those who have not collected, you know, for those who have collected their cars, I want to make an appeal. Please don't collect your card and sit. Even don't sell your cars. Collect it and go yourself and vote during the election. Those who have not collected their, their cars, you know, let me and you please join them in prayers that God will spare our life, you know, that when we resume the continued voter registration exercise and the collection of the PBCs, they can collect their own and vote in subsequent election. We are not going to stop election after... Uh, February 25, we are going to have so many subsequent elections, and that's my answer. Well, thank you very much, <laughs> Alaji Ayabello, for being with us on Dateline Abuja, and good luck with all the work you have ahead of you. Uh, thank you very much, you know, for inviting us to this. Uh, the press, especially the channels, has been, you know, a very formidable partner with INA, a very critical stakeholder, you know, in our own will to ensure that election in this country is transparent, credible, inclusive, and acceptable by the majority people of this nation. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>